Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about facts versus feelings. So, some people will say facts over feelings. And in doing so, they're basically claiming that their argument is a logical one. They're arguing from a standpoint of evidence, and they're using, they're, again, they're using evidence to support their argument, and the other side of the, the debate, the opposition, are using feelings to support their argument. They're using emotions. So you could say fact, this is facts versus feelings, logic versus emotion, or even, or even logos versus pathos, if you want to go back to ancient Greece. But the point is that the people who think they're arguing logically will say that their opposition is appealing to emotion, right? We have this appeal to emotion fallacy. Now, here's the thing. This might be a little controversial, but I'm going to say that the appeal to emotion fallacy is fallacious, okay? The fallacy itself is fallacious. Now, again, it's a little controversial, but I'm going to explain why why this appeal to emotion fallacy is fallacious. So to do this, let's provide an example, okay? We'll say that, say you're a capitalist and you you support capitalism, right? You're going to try to find facts and evidence to support capitalism. So you'll point out that capitalism in the United States has led to the highest level of prosperity in the world. It's led to all of these advanced technologies that we have today. Therefore, it's better than communism, which has led to tons of suffering in the past, right? Tons of pain, tons of war, and tons of genocide, right? So, therefore, capitalism is better than socialism, and capitalism is the best system we've used so far. Now, what is the basis of this argument? Again, you say that capitalism leads to prosperity. Prosperity leads to happiness, okay? And you say that communism leads to suffering, right? Suffering is pain, okay? So... The basis of your argument is that you are maximizing prosperity, you're maximizing happiness, and you're minimizing pain and suffering, okay? The basis of your argument is emotional. That's the point. You're using facts and evidence to support your desired emotional outcome. That is... Th this is true with every single argument you can possibly make, and I mean every single one. So... Let's break it down to the simplest argument you can make. Okay, 2 plus 2 equals 4. If, if everyone but you believes that 2 plus 2 equals 5, it, it's going to be a little chaotic, right? It's going to cause confusion in your head, right? You're, you're going to pay a dollar extra for, every, for everything you buy. It's, it's, in effect, you're going to become stressed out due to this confusion. You are arguing that 2 plus 2 equals 4 in order to diminish confusion, in order to diminish the stress that comes from that confusion. It's an emotional argument, okay? And if I haven't convinced you yet, again, that's as simple of an argument as I can make. But let's dive a little deeper into this, okay? Again, every argument you use, you, you use facts and, and evidence to logically support a desired emotional outcome, okay? And I encourage you to apply this to any argument you can think of because it's true. Any debate, both sides are doing this uh, on any debate. But here's the thing, you know, people cherry pick facts, right? They, they cherry pick the evidence they want and they ignore the evidence that doesn't support their side of the debate. So what does that look like? Well, again, if we go back to the capitalism versus social or communism thing, you know, capitalists would say that capitalism leads to prosperity, but they'd ignore all the all the poverty has led to. And maybe they'd say that communism has led to more poverty in the past, and therefore capitalism is better. Or maybe they would ignore the fact that capitalism has led to tons of wars, right? And, and this military-industrial complex in the United States. They'd ignore the things that don't support their their argument, right? That's not a logical argument. If you ignore the things that don't support your argument, you're not arguing logically. So let's give a couple other emotion, or other uh, examples here. So we could talk about, say, say you support Trump, but you don't support Trump because you like his economic policies or his foreign policy. You support Trump because he's entertaining. You just want somebody who's going to show up in mainstream media and entertain you. And that's that's kind of what Trump does. If nothing mattered, Trump is pretty entertaining, right? And 
again, you like the entertainment. You like the comedic relief that Trump provides. That's an emotion, okay? You're, the basis of your argument is that Trump should be president because he entertains me. It's, 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 the emotion lies at the foundation of every single argument. So, in effect, if you're not a psychopath, then you are usually arguing from a standpoint in order to maximize positive emotions, right? You would rather see prosperity than pain and suffering. You would rather be entertained than bored, right? So, again, a, a psychopath might argue that murder should be legal so that pain and suffering is maximized. Maybe maybe that person likes pain and suffering, but because most of us are healthy in, in that mind, we, we prefer to maximize those positive emotions, and therefore we prefer to use facts and evidence to support positive emotional outcomes, right? So uh, we could uh, provide another example here. Let's look at atheists, atheism versus religion, okay? So a religious person might argue that a, a sinner or heretic, an atheist, is diminishing prosperity. They would maybe argue that, uh, for example, a, a person who abuses alcohol is a sinner, and therefore they're hurting society and they're diminishing the positive emotional outcomes. So they would argue that religion is, that, that everyone should be religious, right? They would argue, uh, they may even start wars to get rid of the atheists, right? To get rid of the, the sinners, the heretics. And on the other hand, an atheist would argue that the religious people are diminishing the positive emotional outcomes by starting wars to kill all the people they don't agree with, right? As they have in the past, okay? The bottom line is that both of these parties are trying to maximize positive emotional outcomes, but they ignore the, the, their own hypocrisy. They ignore the negative emotional outcomes that are factually based from their own behaviors, right? They ignore the behaviors that don't support their their side of the debate, right? So, if we, it, it's not necessarily the sinning atheists or the warmongering religions that are the problem. The problem is the intolerance of each other. The problem is the conflict. It's the division between them. So, to better explain this, it's pull up another debate, okay? The pro-vax versus anti-vax, right? When, uh, so when the government, <clears throat> when they paid all these pharmaceutical companies these billions of dollars to administer these vaccines, and then these pharmaceutical companies pay the media to push the vaccines on people, it created a social movement that ultimately leaked into the private industry. And before long, the private employers were mandating vaccines on their employers, right? Or their employees. And in effect, you know, you either get the vaccine or you get fired. It's it, this social pressure turned into economic pressure. And that economic pressure led to, led to people being forced to get this vaccine. That it's that force. Okay. That, that ultimately leads to distrust in government. Okay. The anti-vaxxers don't trust big pharma. They don't trust the healthcare industry and they don't trust the government because they just forced them to get a, a poorly tested vaccine that maybe they didn't even need, or maybe they did. The bottom line is that the attempts from the pro-vax side to get people to get this vaccine, it caused more distrust. It caused more negative emotions among the anti-vaxxers. And then those negative emotions, what do they do? Well, they carry on, okay? So next time, a worse, say a worse pandemic, pandemic comes around in another 20 years, say a black plague comes around. Now these anti-vaxxers who really do need a vaccine now, they're not getting vaccinated because they don't trust big pharma, the healthcare industry and the government. And now they're spreading the black plague over to the pro-vaxxers. So in effect, the pro-vaxxers caused distrust among the anti-vaxxers and that distrust ended up causing more negative emotions among the pro-vaxxers. 
the bottom line is that again it's the conflict between these two sides that actually causes the negative emotions when you own and again you're not arguing from a logical standpoint if you ignore the facts that don't support your argument and only use the ones that do so if you're a pro-vaxxer and you ignore the, the the adverse health effects of these vaccines then the end result is that you're going to create more distrust among the people who are not ignoring those adverse health effects and if you use if you use your pro-vax standpoint to force the vaccine on people to mandate the vaccine on people you create more negative emotions among pro-vaxxers and anti-vaxxers the bottom line is it's the conflict that's the problem here it's the fact that no one is arguing from a logical standpoint the only logical standpoint to argue here is to put the facts out there and allow people to make decisions for themselves because when you control people when you force people to get a vaccine or perhaps when you force people to be religious through a war or you force or atheists force religious people to give up their religion somehow or another the bottom line is that people get fearful and they dig in deeper and this these negative emotions they spread across the divide they don't just sit on one side of the divide or the other both sides suffer as a result so the only logical argument in any argument is to put the facts and the evidence out there and allow people to make decisions for themselves the moment you implement control over your opposition based on a, a partial collection of facts is the moment you diminish your ability to actually get your desired emotional outcome your positive emotional outcome the point is that it's the division that's the problem we need to unify we need to work together across these divides and we do that by not trying to control each other across those divides we do it by allowing people to make their own decisions okay that's the only logical argument if you want to maximize positive emotional outcome emotional outcomes you have to allow your opposition to do as they please otherwise you lead to more negative emotional outcomes okay that's the takeaway of this video and I conclude by saying that the appeal to emotion fallacy it's a fallacy if you think about it logically when you force your opposition to a certain to to, to to behave a certain way in order to reach your desired emotional outcome you are diminishing the ability to reach your desired emotional outcome in the long term and in all, in all likelihood the short to medium term every argument is based in emotion okay you you it, it, again I, I provided enough examples in this video for you to see that so it's not facts over feelings and it's not feelings over facts either the truth is is that when you are truly logical facts and feelings are one of the same okay when you are truly logical you realize that the the logic the facts you use to support your argument have to not enable you to control your opposition otherwise you lead to more suffering which ultimately diminishes your ability to create your desired positive emotional outcome and that's the problem in this country the problem is that people are trying to control each other if we pro if i uh, give you another example you know say that the social media the left-wing social media tries to control or tries to censor the right which happens often right with the twitter files and the, and the facebook files we saw the the point is that when that ha when you when the left tries to control the speech of the right the right responds in kind and now they're banning books right and if you only look at one side of that censorship if you only look at one side of those infringements on the first amendment and you ignore the opposition or you ignore your own hypocritical behavior you're you're increasing the negative emotional outcomes on both sides you cannot control your opposition you have to give them factual information and that's it let them make their own decisions okay in effect it's it's kind of a freedom versus authoritarianism debate if we keep 
trying to control our opposition, we're going to play this game of authoritarian leapfrog. Okay, before long, the right wing isn't going to be allowed to talk on, on Facebook and Twitter and, and social media. And you also won't be able to find a, a, a single book in, in conservative states that teaches about homosexuality and transgenderism. We need to stop trying to control each other. We need to just let each other live. And we need, beyond that, we need to work together with our fellow working class citizens rather than allowing these divides to, to fester. Okay? It's the only way that we're going to take control of this ruling class that's actually the cause of the problem. We need to raise class consciousness, and we do that by not controlling each other, but by encouraging freedom, encouraging people to make decisions on their own. Okay? Because again, if we're arguing for anything, we're arguing from an emotional standpoint. And we're arguing in such a way that maximizes our desired emotional outcome. You cannot maximize that desired emotional outcome by controlling your opposition. It doesn't work because when you are controlling your opposition, you are ultimately ignoring facts. Okay? Thank you for watching.